Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to create an easy to use quick to reference study guide for the Salesforce Business Analyst Certification. We're going to break Trailhead's exam guide down and we're going to use it to create a study guide that we can use to study and pass the BA certification quickly. By the end of the session, you're going to have a spreadsheet that looks a little like this. On this spreadsheet, you can see that we have an overview tab for the high level details of the exam. We then have a sections and objective tab, which gives us more detail about what we need to know. And then we have a checklist tab, which gives us an easy and quick way to reference the individual concepts and features that we need to know to pass the exam. It's almost like a cheat sheet. If you don't know me, my name is Dave Massey, and I'm a 10 times certified Salesforce professional. I was a lead solution engineer at Salesforce until recently when I left to do my own thing. My own thing was found in GetForce Certified, and I did this because I wanted to provide clear, concise, and comprehensive Salesforce training that helps you upskill and become certified fast. Personally, I sat and passed the Business Analyst Certification on my very first attempt in the first week that it was released, and I used the spreadsheet that we're going to build to help me do that. So I'm going to show you how you can do the same too. So let's start by taking a closer look at the study guide and what we'll have at the end of this session and why it will help you pass the business analyst certification. So let's take a look at our study guide and we're going to start with the overview tab. Now this just gives us a nice overview of the business analyst exam. It includes links to the exam guide and to the trail mix. And all I've done there is I've just simply copied the hyperlink and just copied and pasted it in there. And then it just gave me this ability to shorten it, which it will do for you as well. Then we have the number of questions, the passing percentage, and the passing number of questions. So we can see really what's expected of us. Now I'm going to show you where we get that information from shortly, but what I just want to highlight to you is this field here, because I've just used a formula field here, just to show that we're looking at, you know, the number of questions, which is 60. We're times in that by the passing percentage, and that's giving us the passing number of questions. So we know that we need to get 43.2 questions correct. So we need to get basically 44 correct in order to pass. Then we have the section by section breakdown. And what we have is we just have the section, we have the weighting, and then we have the number of questions we can expect for that section. So again, I've just used a formula here. And all I've done is I've looked at the number of questions and I've timed it by the percentage of the weighting that we have for that section. And that again, just gives us what we need to know, which is 10.2 questions for the customer discovery section. Now, as you know, you can't have 10.2 questions, but it gives us an indicator that we can expect to see between 10 to 11 questions for that section. Then we have the mock scores column. And on this mock scores column, I've just formatted the cell so it's a percentage cell. And then what I've done is I've used a bit of conditional highlighting. So if we just go into view more cell actions here and we go to conditional formatting, you can see that I've set these rules here. So if the value is less than or equal to 67%, it's red between 67 and 77% is amber, and then at 77% or more, it's green. And the reason for that is I've just given us a buffer of 5% either way. Now, that means this is going to dynamically change. So if I change that to 60, you'll see that that's changed there as well, so it's gone red. What that also does is it updates the total score here. So if I just go into that cell there, you can see that again, I'm using another formula and I'm just looking at the average of these cells and then calculating the total there. This will give us a really good idea of how we can expect to perform on the exam in total. So I'm just going to change that back to 72 and you'll see it updates it as well. We then have a column for confidence and we've got the values of low, medium and high. And all I've done to set them is I've just gone in to data validation basically. So if we go to view more cells, we go to data validation, you can see that I've just created a list here that we can pick from. What I've also done, as you could probably tell as well, is I've also used conditional formatting. So if it's set as low, we can see that it's going to be red. If it's set as medium, it'll be amber. And then if it's set as high, it's going to be green. Now, the reason that I've done this is again, to give us a nice, easy visual representation. So as you can probably gather, the idea behind doing all this is so that when we're studying and when we need to have a quick kind of recce of where we're up to and where we need to focus, we can simply open up this study guide and we can see from this very first page, a brief overview, a very high level view of how we're performing. Then we have another section for mock exams. And this is just where we're going to be able to record any mock exams that we've taken, the date that we've taken them, 
the result, and then any concepts that we ran into that we need to revise on. So if there was any questions that came up that you felt unsure about or you know you need to focus on more, you can just detail them here and you'll be able to see them. Then if we move to the second tab, you can see we have the section and its objectives underneath. We have a column for the concepts, and then we also have the confidence column as well. And again, we've done this exactly like we did on the first tab. So we've just got data validation to show that the only values we've got is low, medium, and high. And then we've just used conditional formatting again to color them as well. I've also included a column for more details. And the reason for this is if there is a specific part of the concept that we're struggling with, then we can detail the section here. So we can just type in here whatever it is that we need just to really get a better understanding of where we need to focus. Then we have the checklist tab. And here is where we can see a breakdown of each section and concept or feature that we need to know. We can set that we've reviewed the concept and that we've understood it. And we can also look at our confidence level as well. So again, we can record if we're low, confident, medium, or high confidence. To create these checkboxes, all you need to do is go to insert and checkbox, and that'll just add a checkbox in there. So I just make it easier for me to, again, reference and see how I'm performing on there as well. Now, one note that I do want to make here is that I've created this checklist as I've gone through the trail mix and its resources to make sure I had a fully comprehensive understanding of what to expect on the exam. It also helps that I've been creating a business analyst certification study guide, and I've used that as well to fill in some of the blanks and to add a bit more detail in here. Now, the reason that I've done this is because I want to maximize my chances of passing any exam that I take on the first attempt. And I think that's what most people want to do as well. And I created this to help me do that because I can quickly look at the section and I can look at the concept and I know where I need to focus. And the confidence column, again, just gives me a nice easy way to see where I'm feeling confident and where I'm not feeling so confident as well. So how did I go about getting the information to build out this study guide? Well, let me show you how, and it starts with the Salesforce Business Analyst Exam Guide. A lot of people don't realize just how much information is on this page and how it can really help you pass the exam. It gives you everything that you need to know, and if you pull the right information from here, you'll well be on your way to setting yourself up for success. So if we scroll down, you can see that we have the audience description section here. Now this is really good for setting the tone of what you can expect on the exam. It talks about experience, knowledge, skills, and the abilities that you should have prior to sitting the exam. Now I do want to take a second here just to point out that you don't necessarily need to have these. Just because you don't have them, it doesn't mean that you can't sit and pass the exam and become a certified business analyst. It's just what's recommended by Salesforce. I know plenty of people who've sat and passed these certification without the recommended experience. These guys then went on to land BA roles and they're doing exceptionally well in them. So take this section with a pinch of salt and don't let it put you off. If we scroll further down, you can see that we get to the good stuff, which is the about the exam section. In this about the exam section, there's a lot of information that we can pull and put into our spreadsheet. We have the number of questions, and the passing score. This is the information that we took and added to our overview tab of our study guide. We also have details such as the cost, the retake fee, and the prerequisite of the Salesforce Administrator certification. And again, if we scroll down a little bit further, you can see the recommended training and references section. Here, we have the link to the trail mix for the prepare for your Salesforce business analyst credential, as well as the module prep. Now, I'm just gonna open this up in a new tab because it's something that we're going to look at shortly. We also have a link to Trailhead Academy. So if you do have the time and the money to pay a few thousand dollars for some live training and workshops, then this is where you can find it as well. But now we're going to get to the really good part, which is the exam outline. The exam outline gives us a fantastic resource to really get a good understanding of what to expect. It gives us the sections and percentage weighting of each section. And we can use these in our study guide to get a better idea of what we're going to face. We already know the number of total questions on the exam. So if we have the percentages, we can work out roughly how many questions we can expect for each section. This should help you prioritize where to focus your studies. For example, there's not much point spending as much time on user acceptance as collaboration with stakeholders. Because of the percentages there, you're going to get far more questions on the collaboration with stakeholders section than you will for user acceptance. So just be conscious of this when you're studying. So if we head back to our study guide again, 
You can see that we've taken the number of questions, the passing percentage, and we've worked out the number of passing questions, so the number of questions we need to get right. We've also done the same for the weighting and again with the number of questions here. So we did run through that earlier on, but just in case you didn't catch it and you want me to do it again, what we've got is we've just put in the number of questions, the passing percentage, and then we've just times the number of questions by the passing percentage to give us our passing questions. We've then done the same for the number of questions. So we've times the number of questions by the percentage weighting for that section, and that's give us the number of questions we can expect for that section. Another good thing about the exam guide is the sections actually give us an idea of what we can expect. So it gives us a glimpse into the type of concepts and topics that we need to know. So for example, in customer discovery, we can safely guess that we're going to need to know how to run a discovery with a customer, which can include elicitation techniques, current state analysis, the to be state analysis, and much more. And then in the user stories section, we're going to need to know about user stories. So let's take a closer look at each of these. So if we open each section up, we're going to get the list of objectives and we can take a look at these and predict what we're going to need to know. So if we look at the fourth one down on the customer discovery, we can see that we need to apply the implementation lifecycle for planning business analyst activities. We can pretty much guess that we're going to need to know about the implementation lifecycle and how our role as a BA reflects in it. And then if we take a look at the last one, which is demonstrate knowledge of Salesforce capabilities and its potential to recommend solutions to the business, we can guess that we're going to need to know about Salesforce and what it can and cannot do. This is where your Salesforce administrator certification comes in. If you've sat it recently, then you should be good to go on this one. If not, it's worth just taking a quick look at the exam guide for the admin cert and just going over the concepts just to give you a bit of background knowledge in there. So what I do from here is then I take each objective and I map it into my study guide and then I brainstorm the concepts that I think might come up. So if we head back to our study guide here, you can see that I'll go to sections and objectives here. And if we just scroll back to the left, I've got customer discovery. So I've got the section here and then I've got demonstrate the knowledge of Salesforce capabilities and its potential to recommend solutions to the business. So with this, I've just put the customer 360 in because I think it's going to be quite high level about the customer 360 as a whole. So that's what we need to know. Now, again, if you're coming into the BA cert and you've done your admin recently, you should pr be pretty confident on this anyway. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head to the trail mix tab because this is the next section of what we can do, the next part. So we opened that up earlier on. So I've just navigated to that. And you can see we now have a breakdown. We have a breakdown in each section of the modules that we need to take. Now, I really strongly recommend that you complete this trail mix before sitting your exam. It's something that's really important and you might not get questions on every single concept that you cover, but it does set the tone and it gives you the skills you need to excel in your BA career. So if we scroll down, you can see that under the customer discovery, we have the Drucker School of Business. We have the Salesforce Business Analyst Quick Look, Journey Mapping, Customer Discovery, etc. Customer Centric Discovery. So we've got information there that we can use. So if we go back to our exam guide again, you can see that I've started detailing them in there and I've done that for all the sections. So this is something that you're going to want to do. Once we've done that, we can then create our final tab. And this tab is the most granular and specific that's going to give us the most information to work with. And it's the checklist tab. So on this checklist tab, we have all the information that we need. It acts almost as our syllabus, a, a cheat sheet, if you will. It's everything that we think we need to know in order to pass the certification. Again, we can fill this out to the best of our abilities based on the information that we have at hand. Another way of doing this is by adding to it as we go through the trail mix and study for the exam. It makes it a little more dynamic and it ensures that we haven't missed anything. So if we head to the trail mix, you can see this is the trail mix for prepare for your business analyst credential. And we can scroll down and we have the sections here. So we have customer discovery. Now, as you're working through this and you're completing each individual module, which I would strongly recommend. So just to confirm that, I really recommend that you complete this trail mix before you sit your exam for a number of reasons. One, it's going to cover what you need to know. And two, when you do pass your exam and you're going to do your role as a business analyst, 
This will give you the foundation and the knowledge you need to be successful in it. So it's really important. It really is up to you of how granular you get. Some of my students make a note of each and every single topic that they encounter. So for example, we have the customer centric discovery module. So if we scroll down here, you'll see we have customer centric discovery. Now, some people would just record that as customer centric discovery, which if we head back to our exam guide, you can see that what we've done there is customer centric discovery. Now, I do know some students who really want to get as fine a detail as possible. And what they'll actually do is they'll list each of the four parts. So they'll list know your customer, be your customer, connect with your customer and create with your customer. Now, this would result in quite a large document. Now, that isn't right and it isn't wrong. It's entirely up to you personally. I like to have a bit of a higher level view so I can just quickly look. I can see, right, I need to know customer centric discovery. And then I can go into my own notes and I can start getting into them in more detail. Whereas other people I know want to be able to see everything on this spreadsheet. So they want to be able to look at it and see the granular concepts. Like I said, it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. If I was doing a technical certification such as the admin sir or CPQ, then I would get more granular than this. But because the BA exam is more theoretical than technical, it makes it a little bit more difficult to do. What you will find on the BA exam as well is there's actually quite a bit of overlap between sections and objectives. So let me run you through an example of what I mean. So we're just going to head back to the exam guide again here. And I'm just going to open up um, requirements and I'm going to open up user stories. And I want to highlight your attention to these bullet points here. So we have document requirements in a version control repository to manage scope and document user stories in a version control repository to manage scope. So these are very similar and there's quite a bit of overlap for this. We know that we're going to need to know about version control. So we'll also need to know about version control tools and how they can be used. There are a few instances of this throughout the exam guide, but these are the clearest ones. The good thing about this is that you will cover multiple objectives with similar information and it'll help speed up your learning, especially if you're being taught or you're studying in a comprehensive manner to begin with. So before we finish off, let's head back to our study guide. Now, once we've built our study guide, we have a great place to start our studies. We have a good overview of what to expect from the exam. We can record how we're feeling about each section and how our past results are looking. We can then dive a little bit deeper into the sections and objectives, again, recording how confident we feel about each concept. And we can also highlight any concepts that we're unsure of. Then finally, we have our checklist, which is the most detailed list of what we need to know. This is great, not only for studying, but for revising as well. It helps you identify where you need to focus your efforts. So if you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and let me know what you think in the comments. GetForce Certified Salesforce Business Analyst course is going to be launching very soon, and I'll announce more details and sneak previews on this channel, so it's definitely worth subscribing. The study guide is going to be included as part of the course, so it will save you the time of creating it yourself. The course itself is going to include over six hours of clear, concise and comprehensive training videos, one page cheat sheets for each concept that you need to know and check your learning quizzes to improve your knowledge retention. I'll include a link in the description below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.